Hey, what's up guys? This is Neil with Neil Ray's Ministries, and I want to welcome you to today's episode of Champions Walk. Today's topic that we're going to be speaking about is how to receive your prayer language. Again, the topic of today's teaching is how to receive your prayer language. I'm going to open up in prayer, and then we're going to get right into the Word. Father God, I come before you, Lord, and thank you for all that you're doing within our life. Lord, I thank you for your faithfulness. I thank you for your love. And I thank you that as I speak today, Lord, the words that come out of my mouth will be all of you, Lord, and none of me. Lord, I thank you that as we speak today and teach on how to receive your prayer language, that those who have never received this gift will open up their hearts and their minds and receive it today. Father, I also thank you for loving them right where they're at. And even if they already have a prayer language, I believe that today many will get a new one. Father, I thank you for having your hand on the people who are watching. And I thank you for loving us enough to guide us through this teaching today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, praise God. I'm glad that you've been able to join us today. Today we're going to be speaking about how to receive your prayer language. Now, if you've been following along within this series, we're doing the Sword of the Spirit series, and today is part five. Now, if you haven't caught up on our other teachings, then we invite you to swing by our website. You can swing by at neilreyes.com, and if you click on the videos link or click on the TV broadcast, you'll find all of our teachings there available to stream 24 hours a day at no charge to you. In there, you can go back and catch the previous teachings we've already done on Sword of the Spirit 1 up through 4, and remember today is part 5. We've been talking about the importance of speaking in tongues, and in this series, we've been breaking down that when you pray in the Spirit, the Sword of the Spirit, that yes, that's often referred to as God's Word, but it's also broken down as the ability to pray in tongues or pray in the Spirit. Now, one of the things we've talked about through the entire this entire series is that as we're learning God's Word, we're encouraging people never to put God or His Word in a box. What I mean by that is this. Oftentimes people, when they're learning about the Word, when they come across a scripture, they'll try to think that it only has one context or one meaning or only refers to one thing. But God's Word is a living Word, meaning that it continues to grow. That's why as believers, we can pick up God's Word today and read a scripture, and we can pick up His Word tomorrow and read the same scripture and do that for every day for the rest of our lives. And God has the ability to show us a new application for that scripture each day of our life. In other words, He's always able to show us a new application, a new meaning, a deeper level of understanding. And it's able to grow and grow and grow. Why is that? Because God's Word is a living Word. And so as we're covering what sort of the Spirit is, what we're encouraging people is to understand it means more than one thing. Sometimes as believers, we'll read His Word and we only understand it in one context. But praise God, we have teachings like this that come along and open us up to a deeper level of understanding of His Word. So today we're continuing part five of Sword of the Spirit series, and today we're talking about how to receive your uh, prayer language. Now in doing so, I want to take you right to the Word. We have two foundation scriptures we've been covering through the course of the series, and I want to jump into them. Our first one's found out of Ephesians 6, and we're going to go verses 13 through 18. So Ephesians 6 13 through 18. Let's read. And today, by the way, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. So Ephesians 6, 13 through 18. Let's read. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your foot or your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take, on, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints." Now, as we talk about that, the very last part of this, I want to read this again. 
It says, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. One of the things I want to break down is that when we're studying God's Word, one of the things it's talking about is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. This is a key thing. When we're talking about, because I said in the beginning that this has more than one meaning to it, and that we're talking about how the sword of the Spirit is also praying in the Spirit, that's what it refers to. When I'm talking about that, some people say, but you just read it says the Word of God. That's what I need you to understand. When we're talking about praying in the Spirit, the words that are coming out of your mouth are the words of God. They may not be the Word of God you understand in the Bible. In fact, when people pray in tongues, they don't know at all what they're saying. If you're wondering why that is, then go back to our previous teachings in the series because we really took a lot of time to break that down. But when you're praying in the Spirit, that's you yielding to the Holy Spirit to pray directly to God the Father through you and you're uttering things you do not understand. However, the Holy Spirit understands and God the Father understands. And when we're praying, it's more important for the Father to understand what we're trying to say than for us to understand. Now, yes, it's important for us to know what we're saying. But at times when we're praying in the Spirit, one of the main benefits of that gift is you're often praying about your future. Well, how can you pray about something you don't know about yet? You see, the Holy Spirit always knows the end from the beginning. It tells us in the Word that God always sees the end from the beginning. And when you're praying in the Spirit, oftentimes you're covering uh, your future in prayer. It's kind of like what you find in Romans 4.17, that you have the ability to call things not as they are, but as they're meant to be. You're impacting your future. Other times you're praying for you or your loved ones. You're praying for protection. You're praying a change of outcome. You're praying for open doors within your life. It tells us in God's Word and Revelations that the doors in which God opens, nothing can shut. And the doors He shuts, nothing can open. Oftentimes when we're praying in the Spirit, we're opening doors in the future for us. We're opening doors of success. In other cases, we're closing those doors through prayer. And we're taking our request before the Father by yielding to the Holy Spirit and praying through the Spirit. Now, I have another foundation scripture I want to take you to. And that's going to be found out of Romans 8. 26 and 27. So Romans 8, 26 and 27, and let's go ahead and read. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I'm going to read that to you one more time and break down what that means a little bit. So likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. When we're looking at that right there, what it's talking about, when the Spirit makes groanings, intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered, He's not saying we don't have the ability to speak it. What he's saying is the only way you're able to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through you in this prayer language is by yielding your tongue to Him. I'm going to say that again. The only way to operate in your prayer language and pray to the Father through the Holy Spirit is by yielding your tongue to the Holy Spirit. In other words, you've got to allow Him to flow through you in a way where He's in charge of your tongue. Now, you may not understand what you're saying, but this brings what the Word calls as edification for the individual. Edification means the act of building up. When you spend time praying in the Spirit, praying in your prayer language, you are building yourself up as a believer. You may not understand what you're saying, but your spirit man does. And your spirit man is always turned on whether you realize it or not. I'm going to say that again because there's some people here that that, in, that statement I just said just impacted them. 
whether you realize it or not, your spirit man is always turned on. It never turns off. Your spirit man is always turned on. In other words, that's why you have the ability as a believer that when you go to sleep, if you have something playing in the background like a teaching or if you go to sleep with your headphones and you're listening to a teaching on God's Word, your mind may not be comprehending what's going on, but your spirit man is absorbing all of it. Why? Because you you don't turn off your spirit. Your spirit man never turns off. That's why it's so important, even leading up to bed, that we're careful with the way we close our day out. We're careful with the things that we're watching. We're careful with the things that we're listening to. We need to feed our spirit going into bedtime so that it continues to get fed through the night while the teaching's playing. Another thing I'll tell you is that when you're praying in the spirit, one of the most beneficial things you can do is to pray, is to fall asleep praying in the spirit. Or what I should say is praying in the spirit up until you go to bed. Why is that? Because when you spend time praying in the spirit as you approach sleeping, when you fall asleep, your spirit will remain praying in the spirit throughout that entire time while you're sleeping. I know that may be a foreign concept for people, but I'm giving you some good instruction here. When you spend time praying in the spirit, you will turn around and if you close your evening out with praying in the spirit up until you fall asleep, once you fall asleep, your body is at rest. Your mind is at rest, but your spirit is still praying in the spirit. You're still fellowshipping with the spirit. And I'm telling you that that's one of the greatest, greatest weapons to the believer's arsenal that we've been given from the Lord. Now, I want to go ahead and break down the second half of this scripture. So what it also says is, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. In other words, when he who searches the heart, who is that? That's the Holy Spirit. That's God. You know, one of the things that tells us in God's Word is that man judges by the outward appearance. But the God, he judges by the intentions of the heart. In other words, man judges by the outer level. God judges by the inner level. So when you're praying in the Spirit, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for us, for the saints, according to the will of God. Who are the saints? The saints are defined in the Bible and God's Word as anyone who is born again, anyone who is saved. So if you're a believer... If you're saved and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, then by God's standard, He qualifies you and calls you as a saint in His Word. Now, I know there's some religions out there that turn around and they hold saints on a different level. You know, I was raised in the Catholic Church. So specifically with Catholics, this is not a knock on them. But they raise saints and or hold saints in a different esteem. There are saints within the church that are people that they look up to and hold in high regard and show them high honor because these are people who they felt lived extraordinary lives. However, in God's word, and I'm not saying that's wrong for them to do. Okay, that's I'm not I'm not picking up that debate today. Some people are like that is wrong for them to do. It's never wrong to give someone honor. Where it's wrong or or contradicts God's word is if you lift up a prayer to them because when you do, you're violating a commandment Jesus gave us. He said you pray to the Father through Him as the Son and Jesus. In other words, you pray to the Father, Father God, in the name of Jesus. You don't pray to a saint, you pray to Father God. Now, I'm not trying to ding on Catholics. Like I said, I was raised in Catholics. I have many Catholic friends who praise God. Not only are we friends here, we're going to be friends in heaven, praise God, together, because we're both going to heaven. Praise Jesus. But what I am breaking down to you is when we talk about the saints, and this is why you need to listen to this. When we talk about this, when he says, because he makes intercession... For the saints, according to the will of God, the saints that he's talking about are the believers. And I'm saying that so that you understand that this gift goes directly to you. And if you are Catholic or another religion that you believe in saints and you're listening, don't let the enemy get you offended on what I'm saying. Pay attention to the deeper things we're talking about here. I'm letting you know that this gift of praying in the Spirit directly impacts you, you, Mr. Believer, You, Mrs. Believer, the person who's saved. So as we talk about that, 
today we're going to uh, help you with how to receive your prayer language. So as we talk about how to receive your prayer language, there's a simple qualification that you have to meet in order to receive this. The prayer language or ability to speak in tongues, the prayer language, your prayer language, in order to receive it, there is a qualification. And the qualification is that you must be born again. Your name must be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In other words, you must be saved by God's account. Now, I know in different countries across the world, saved means something different to them. But what we're talking about is being born again, accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior in your heart, and then receiving Him into your heart to live your life for Him, that personal one-on-one relationship with Him. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. It doesn't matter what type of church you belong to or what type of body of Christ you're going to as far as what denomination. If you in your heart believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you confess that out of your mouth, the Bible tells us that you've been saved or you've been born again. In fact, specifically, it talks about it in Romans 10, 9 and 10. So Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. It says that if you believe in your heart, and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, then your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In other words, heaven has an account that you are saved. This is such a valuable and important thing. This is inviting Jesus into your heart and letting Him sit on the throne of your heart. It means you're saved. It means that when your time on this world expires, you're going to be with Him for eternity in heaven. That is how you get to heaven. It breaks it down in the Word. At the same time, when we're studying the gifts of the Holy Spirit, if I were to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and break down all the nine gifts for you, you you know, there's three groups of three. They're broken down in three groups of three, but you have the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. One of the things it tells us in that is that it says that no one can do anything to earn these gifts. It's the Holy Spirit to give to each as He desires. However, there are things you can do to position yourselves to receive them. The first thing you have to do is you have to be born again. The other things you can do is when you begin to grow in the fruits of the Spirit, in other words, when you begin to develop Christ's character within you, different gifts will come on you at different times. But it's the Holy Spirit who determines who gets the gifts and when and also how they operate. But as we talk about today and how to receive your prayer language, I want to share with you the importance of this. When you're praying in the Spirit, and we've already broken down in our previous teachings the difference between speaking in tongues and praying in tongues. Speaking in tongues is when you're speaking in a tongue in a public setting and it requires someone to interpret the tongue. And the same person who delivers the tongue, who speaks the tongue, can also be the same person who receives it. But that's always done in a public setting that's in a teaching type of a manner. In other words, it happens within a church type setting at a Bible study, in a prayer group, or when you're ministering to someone one-on-one, that's when the speaking in tongue must be followed by the interpretation of tongue when that's given. But there are other times that people talk in tongues, and that's when they're praying in tongues. And that's what we refer to as their prayer language or praying in the Spirit. And when you're praying in the Spirit, it's you communicating directly to the Lord through the Holy Spirit. Now, The number one blocker for people who turn around, or maybe I'll say the number two blocker, the number one blocker that prevents people from receiving their prayer language is doubt and unbelief. That's the number one thing. That's Let's just break that down right now. The number one thing that prevents people from receiving their prayer language and the ability to pray in the Spirit is doubt and unbelief. Doubting that it's actually real or doubting that it happens. But the number two thing that prevents people from praying in the Spirit is their own mind, their head. They let their head get in the way. They let their mind get in the way. You know, you, it's, you can't understand the things of the Spirit with your intellectual mind. You know, it tells us in God's Word that the Spirit does not understand the flesh and the flesh does not understand the Spirit. In other words, wrapping your understanding around how praying in tongues works is not done with your intellect. It's done with your faith. This is a faith action, not an intellect action. It's a faith action. 
Now, yes, there's understanding you can get as a believer where you grow in your understanding, and that's important. That's what we're teaching today is we're growing your understanding, but the act of praying in tongues, that's a faith action, not an intellect action. And as you're praying in the Spirit, this is you yielding to the Holy Spirit to pray through you. Now, when I say the number two thing that gets in the way of people who want to pray in the Spirit is as they're trying to pray, their mind gets in the way. And as they start to make sounds out of their mouth, they'll hear the enemy talking to them. They'll turn around and say, you know, is that me? Or is that the Lord? Am I making that word up? Or am I making that sound up? Or is the Lord making that sound up? No, you have to understand it's the Holy Spirit going through you. And as you pray with that, the more you lean into it with faith, the greater this gift gets, the greater the impact of this gets. You know, exercising your spiritual or your faith is much like exercising your natural muscles. You know, when you turn around and you go to the gym, if you never turn around and do exercise there, your muscles are never going to grow. Simply having a membership to the gym and going and checking in at the front desk and walking through the gym and looking at all the equipment, that will never grow your muscles. If you want to grow your muscles, then you have to go on those machines and exercise them. You have to pick up some of those heavy objects called weights and exercise. And then you must feed your body so that it responds to the exercise and you fuel your body to build yourself up, to build your muscles up. The spiritual world is much the same. When we're building our faith or our spiritual actions, you must turn around and exercise the things found in God's Word. And then you must feed yourself on His Word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. You need to feed yourself on what His Word has to say. And when you do that, you're giving yourself the nutrition that you need in order to grow in this thing. So today... As we're beginning to close this teaching, we're not at the end yet, but we're getting close. As we're beginning to close this, I want to guide you through how to receive your prayer language. So first of all, I already gave you the qualification, you must be saved. So before we go into the next step, if you're not saved, or if you're not certain if you're saved, or if you feel in your heart like there's some things you need to get right with God because you've drifted, then I'm going to lead you in this prayer first, and then I'm going to walk you through how to receive your prayer language. So if this is you, and you're struggling in your heart with some things, or you're not sure if you're right with God, maybe you were at one point, but now you're not sure, or you've never made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, then I'm going to ask you to repeat after me. Father God, I come before you with my whole heart. Lord, I surrender to you my life. I surrender to you my will. And I surrender to you my heart. All of me, Lord. All of me. I declare that Jesus is the Son of God. That He died on the cross and rose for me. That He's seated by the right hand of God. And that through His blood, through His sacrifice, I have been saved and born again. So I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus is Lord. Jesus, I invite you to come into my life. I love you, Lord, and I worship you. Praise God. If you did that, you are now born again. Praise you, praise you, Lord. Praise you, Father God. For all of those who just joined us, and, and, and when I mean joined us, but just entered into the body of Christ, we want to hear from you. Send us a message to our ministry. Please reach out to us, and you can send us through our contact page on our website at neilrays.com. Now, down to business. How to receive your prayer language. I'm not going to say this is the only way to receive it. We get in trouble when we try to lock God's Word in a box. But I will tell you that for me, the way I received it, and I have helped many, many people learn how to receive their prayer language, whether it be through video or through my guest speakings or when I'm teaching classes or ministering to them. But the way that I received my ability to, to speak in tongues is I simply opened my mouth 
and operated by faith. Now, God's word tells us that faith without works is dead. So if you're expecting some flame of fire to hit you in the forehead and you start praying in the spirit, I'm not going to tell you that that can't happen, but I'm going to tell you that that may not happen. And you may need to just open your mouth. So opening your mouth and making an action, a corresponding action, faith without works is dead. So what I did for me was I opened my mouth and I simply started babbling like a baby. Ba, 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 ba. And as you do that for a little bit, you'll start feeling the impression to make different syllables come out of your mouth, different sounds. And if you have an impression to make a different sound, that's the Holy Spirit. That's your prayer language coming through. Ba, 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 ga, ra, sha, ba, ba, ye, da, ba, 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 ye, ba, wa, she, ba, 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 ba. And as you're doing it, get your mind out of the way and yield to the Holy Spirit because He's trying to speak through you. Ba, 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 da, ba, ba, de, ba, wa, wa, ba, 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 da, ba, gre, na, ba, ga, ye, sha, da, la, ba, wa, ga, ba, ye. And just like that, your prayer language kicks in. Guys, that is how you receive your prayer language. I encourage you to lean into the Holy Spirit. Trust in His guiding. Get your head out of the way and don't listen to the enemy of trying to question whether or not that's you or God making that sound. Step out in faith and lean into it. Guys, I pray that this teaching spoke to you today. As always, we want to remind you to swing by our website at neilreyes.com where you can connect with us, you can partner with us, and find all of our teachings available to stream 24 hours a day at no charge to you. In addition, we invite you to connect us on social media. You can find us on our YouTube channel, on our Facebook page, or on Twitter. Guys, if these teachings are meaning something to you, then we invite you to share them with your loved ones, with your friends, and allow it to open up conversations for you to minister to each other and use these teachings as the center point. Guys, as always, we want to remind you that Jesus is the Lord and He loves you, and so do we. Thank you, and have a blessed day. Thank you for taking the time to stop by and grow with us today. If you would like more information or would like to support or partner with Neil Reyes Ministries, please visit our website at neilreyes.com, or you can mail us at Neil Reyes Ministries, P.O. Box 586, Fort Worth, Texas, 76052. Today's episode of Champions Walk was brought to you by the faithful partners and supporters of Neil Reyes Ministries, who are joining us in our assignment of waking up the church, setting the captives free, and together we're reaching the lost.